Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today's episode is all about Datacrons, specifically how to farm them in a smart manner. Um, I've never spent any money on Datacrons. I do spend some crystals on uh, data cash, but it's not money and it doesn't break the bank for me. Um, also go over my, uh, this is mainly about conquest, uh, how you go through the farming in that mode, but also how uh, to actually level up your Datacron inventory as you go, because there are do's and don'ts to it. Uh, and it's not talked about a whole time. Some people don't like Datacrons much. Uh, I don't think they get talked about enough. Uh, so this is just my smart farming guide for Datacrons. So at the time of recording this, we have 7 days, 17 hours left in Conquest. By the time you're seeing it, it might be a week or so left, or it might be way later, and we're not even in Conquest at all. But at this point, with about a week left, most people should, if they are in the position to farm a lot of Datacrons, they should have progressed a lot of the way through Conquest. Uh, me personally, I like to either sprint to the end of Sector 3 and just hit that node over and over again, while farming some global feats and sector feats while I'm at it. Uh, because the biggest bottleneck as far as materials for upgrading Datacrons is this Mark II uh, material. Mark III stacks up a lot. Right now I have 220, so I actually have a decent amount. Uh, but for this Mark I, it stacks up so fast, 1550. There's no way around it. I do have a graphic to show what the cost of upgrading Datacrons is. Um, so I have broken it down into what it costs to go from level 0 to level 3, what it takes to go from level 0 to level 6, and what it takes to go from level 0 to level 9. Um, I also made a video on this back when Set 4 was active, but the channel was pretty small then. It didn't get a lot of views, so it's worth redoing. As you can see, I used a Lord Vader level 9 as an example. This is not the same set, but it is the same colors. So uh, I just worked out that it was time to make a new one when the same graphic came back into... Uh, relevant. Uh, so level 3 is very cheap as far as uh, data cache and your Mark II mats, but as you can see by the time you get to level 9 and even level 6 too, the Mark II mats are by far the biggest bottleneck. Um, and then your data cache, it is way more expensive to get up to level 9 than it would be just to get to level 6. So a smart stopping point for a lot of people uh, would be like either level 3, level 5 on a Datacron, level 6, level 8 or level 9. You don't really want to stop on level 7 because you just have a free stat boost uh, waiting for you at level 8. Um, but if you are if you don't have a specific level 9 in mind, it's very steep to get up that high. Um, and what I'll show you in the, the reward nodes as well is you're always going to have way more Mark 2 or need way more Mark 2 than any of the others. No matter what you do, either the Mark 1s are going to pile up or the Mark 3s are going to pile up. And you're going to be behind on that. Also, data cache, you get the initial boost right when the previous set um, dismantles and you get that big bump. Otherwise, you're really strapped for data cache. You're not really going to get anywhere. Uh, so this is just the overall cost of it. 190 level 3s to get to level 9, but the level 6 you only need 10. Um, and then you only need 90 level 1s or mark 1s to get to level 3. You don't need them any time after that. Uh, so that's why that stacks up so high. But let's look at what the actual rewards give in the nodes. And if you haven't paid close attention, you'll see what I mean now with the Mark II mats. Uh, you can either get the Mark II mats on Sector 3 or Sector 4, and you're getting roughly equal amount of either Mark 1 or Mark 3. But since you need so many more Mark 2s every step of the way past level 3, um, you're just going to have a big pileup of level 1 or Mark 1s or a pileup of Mark 3s. Uh, now I've ranked the val the best value of each sector reward node um, based on how much you're actually getting from hitting that. Uh, and I got some dispute last time about the level three, or actually I showed shared this on Reddit and got dispute there. I got disputed that this was the third most valuable because people end up hitting the data cache node the most. I agree that you hit this the most at the end, but I disagree that it's the best value because the data cache amount is terrible. Um, the only one it beats, or it beats um, Sector 5 because you don't really need these Mark 3s without Mark 2s, and the reroll mats are very low. Uh, what I'm covering up here for Sector 2 is the last place ribbon um, because I think this is the worst sector reward because you don't need the Mark 1s. They're going to stack up super high, and you have the reduced potential for your data cache. I don't know why it's less here than the top, but you have a lower floor and a lower ceiling, so it's just bad news. It's interesting to me that they haven't changed this up uh, in 
eight months really or <laughs> seven or eight months since I last made this but it's always been bounty hunters up through Yoda uh, and I'm kind of glad they haven't messed with it uh, but the best value in terms of like crystals and what you actually get from farming the nodes is sector four for Tuscans um, if you were to buy these with crystals it would be way expensive um, data cash is actually kind of reasonable to get with crystals like if you're spending hundred uh, crystal refreshes for datacron farming you you come close to the same value just buying the data cash straight out you can't buy that much of it in the store and i'll look at that later but that's actually some of the better value mark ones they you get them like water uh, but i ended up farming sector three a lot so i gave that level two just because you can get the most mark twos out of it you can get up to 20 instead of up to 15 so i end up hitting this a lot unless i'm low on the mark threes and then you hit this sector four a lot Tuscans are pretty easy to theorycraft around because they don't have any AoEs and if you just get a voluntary vanguard or something uh, you can hit that node a lot and I'll show some go-to teams uh, for use there uh, but yeah I end up hitting these two are the best value but I do end up hitting sector one a lot uh, except in the first conquest that I said is active because you have so much data cache saved up um, so I'll share this these two graphics in my discord saver discord server a little bit later so go check them out um if you think they're helpful so just for a demonstration of data crunch farming what i do on a regular basis is you just want to find teams that you can auto with like i wish you could sim these nodes but you can't so you just find a team that can win as fast as possible if you have amplify agony uh if that's still activating conquest or you were actually lucky enough to get it that's the best but there's also uh, a few others that can help. Right now, I don't have any Amplify Agony, so I am in an unfortunate situation. Uh, but Commander Luke will melt a team if you have Amplify Agony. They'll melt a team in a matter of seconds. But even without it, you can do a lot. Um, I'll show you my data disk setup in a second. I actually need to take Voluntary Vanguard off. It's not good for this team. Um, but I have Ruthless Swiftness and Blindside. Blindside is giving extra exposes, even more than three, C-3PO grants. Uh, so this team gets tons of those. Uh, so even with that Amplify Agony, I'm going to get through this in not much more than 30 seconds. Um, and the Ruthless Swiftness helps you be able to outspeed even these Tuscans, which have a ridiculous, like, thousand speed. Uh, however, you have Amplify Agony, that is the best quality of life um, data disk you can have that combined with Volatile Accelerator because it makes it so fast and you don't have to spend so much time farming these nodes. Uh, so yeah, good pull, 15 and 15. So yeah, you can use that CLS team all the way down to the bone, close to like 1%. Um, my Voluntary Vanguard is probably harmful in that regard, but I'm still going to leave it on for now. I, I have had a bad luck uh, with this data disk set. I've only been able to get one white level Zealous Ambition. But critical formation really helps, uh, especially with three starring nodes. Uh, so ruthless Swiftness and Ruthless Offense are great. I was lucky enough to finally get entrenched. Uh, but I'm getting, what, 17 plus 22, 39% turn meter whenever someone falls below 100% health. And the second, I think CLS is the best, like, non galactic legend team for data crown farming. The second best is General Grievous. And these are teams that should be accessible to pretty much everyone even if you don't need them for like feats this team is amazing and it's not even a newt or bb8 variety um the reason cls and general grievous are so good with tuscans is because tuscans are super fast so you can't have to speed them with just speed you need turn meter a uh, hon shoots first gets it going and then b2 he wakes up and starts spamming his aoe and he gets the turn meter train going and once you get off to a moving start then they are going to die super fast. If you have Amplify Agony, this battle goes so fast. Um, but they also benefit a lot from Blindside, so it's able to help me out here. It's not as quick as CLS. It's going to take without Amplify Agony, uh, coming closer to a minute. Uh, but I still love this team because I can throw it in. I've got it down to like under 10%, like 1% stamina. So if you're done with the feats and you're just farming Datacrons, um, and you don't care about those anymore. General Grievous and CLS, the best ones to use, hands down. Another great theme that works with either an Amplify Agony build or a Zealous Ambition build is a Rex Lead clones team uh, with Bad Batch, Echo, and Tech. 
because uh, they're both supports. Uh, original Echo is also support, and then Fives there to help keep people alive. Um, but you really get you get a lot of turn meter from both Fives. Uh, unique, it's not going so well to start. Uh, usually you can auto it, but you can get things going with Echo and Tech. You can get them stunned, and as soon as you get the get the turn meter train going, you get it's pretty easy. So I don't have an optimal. They just line up right now because I don't have to play Agony and my Zealous Ambition is weak. Uh, but normally this is a super easy team uh, to use. Idiversio is also a decent team, but I can't run it right now because it's only really good if you have either high Zealous Ambition or you have Amplify Agony. But it's a fast team. It gets quick wins at uh, this point. I think I can put it on auto. Uh, targeting isn't probably a good idea. So yeah, these are some just non-Galactic Legends teams that work well. In this particular example, slow just because my data discs suck, but I just wanted to show you how it works because it's been one of my perennial favorite teams for Conquest um, going on like a year, <laughs> probably. Um, so yeah, they work really well, and Iden's also a good option, but you really need the right data discs for her. Now, what I'd recommend as far as actually uh, spending on the refresh is I would only recommend for most players just to do the 50s. If you want to be really competitive with Datacrons, um, you can stretch to the hundreds. Uh, after that, it's just not worth it. Uh, I personally do 350s in the second conquest the whole way through. I've done maybe one or two 100s when I was impatient. Um, but in the first conquest of a new set, I do the 50s and the hundreds. Um, and that is just totally worth it to me to just, I don't know, get out my inventory to compete in GAC. Uh, but after that, in the second one, there's less time left for the Datacron set. Uh, you're out of your data cache stash. Um, so just use the 50s. Um, but yeah, so 50s, I mean, it's not too much. If it's if it's like a, str a struggle for you to do the 50s, just give up like, I don't know, one refresh of mods or one refresh of something else. Um, but yeah, definitely worth it and for everyone, um, unless you barely have any relic characters, I'd probably recommend doing those 50s. So enough about the actual battles. Uh, that's my strategy of how I approach the actual farming. Usually I'm hitting auto while I'm watching TV or something at night because uh, my reset happens at 8 p.m. my time. Very convenient, by the way. Um, but my approach to actually leveling up the Datacron, so there's several phases to it. So when a new set comes in, um, you want to, you get a few days overlap when you have three sets active and the old set that's going to be dismantled you want to try to dismantle things yeah i have some locked dismantle things ahead of time and then use as much data cache as you can because or if you're in my position you have a ton of data crons you're going to get over the 30 million data cache cap uh right now what this shows it's i think it's a little bit of a low ball well maybe it's not um let me see I don't want to actually dismantle this. Yeah, so this is 2.5 million data cache right now, but usually it changes to 4 million when you actually dismantle it. So you get a lot from the previous set. Um, and then what I'm going to do at the end of this season, so this is the second conquest season uh, for set eight. I'm going to, at the end, once I run out of data cache, I'm going to stock up on level Mark II and Mark III mats. So I have a lot to upgrade this with so that when this expires i can dismantle it use a lot of the data crash on updating this if i can't get enough of set nine data crons to update because um it's hard to get enough of the actual data crons fast enough because that mark one node is kind of spotty with dropping them uh, when the next conquest comes around i can't you can sprint to the end um, and try to get a bunch of data crons but even then it's going to be hard to spend all the data cash because getting to level just three um will not use that much data cache and you don't get a ton of mark two mark three mats from dismantling just a ton of data cache so you have all these different bottlenecks that are hard to work around uh so that's what you plan for when you start out a new set when you're actually into the new set uh most of the progress you're gonna make is in that first conquest just because you have so much data cache uh and you want to try to level things up uh, in parallel, like either get a bunch to level eight, level six, level five, whatever your stopping point is, and don't don't use rerolls because reroll mats are hard to come by. You only get the Mark Threes 
from winning in territory war i only have 65 right now so you want to wait if you're trying to get a specific level nine that's even bigger reason to wait uh so you level up a bunch to level eight see which one has the level three level six abilities you like the most and then also kind of compare that with the stats and then level up to level nine do some re-rolls uh it'll only cost 20 for the level nine which is the hardest to get you can't get it in conquest you could buy it but i've never done that and then it's just easier to get the level nine you want and then after that you can spend some re-rolls on stats uh so i have all the level nines that I really i'm gonna use i might get to use tuscan warrior for the last two seasons or something i have trench i'm using it at mar jade i'm not really using the ben one but i could um, but I have not optimized it to use with Ben because I have kind of disregarded level six because I use this with JML because uh, it's got a lot of protection. Uh, so just don't be re don't see like a level three ability you don't like and re-roll it. Don't be like, oh, I don't want that. I'm going to re-roll it. Like the, the cost of re-rolling increases uh, for all levels at the same time. You only get two that cost 20 per data cron. You only get two that cost 40. And after that, it's 80 per. So not very efficient. Uh, and actually for Mara Jade, I don't, since I don't have any other level nines or anything that I want, I'm just gonna reroll this accuracy because it's not doing anything for me. Um, Hell Steel, Crit Avoidance. Hell Steel on a Mara Jade team, not really doing anything. I'm just gonna go for Crit Avoidance. I don't love it. Uh, I was hoping for either crit damage or protection. I got some other crit avoidance down there, so that's fine. Uh, but see, that that wasn't that great value. If I didn't have the abilities I already wanted, that would have been a terrible idea. But then once you have all the level 9s that you want, and you have some good level 8s for stats. Uh, by the way, if you see some... If you have a bunch of abilities and you don't really care for it, if you're like, okay, I don't care about... Uh, Tuscan abilities. I don't have Tuscans, or maybe I just have one team. Um, you, it, I mean, this can just be a stat cron. You don't worry about rerolling the level three, or level six. In this instance, this is one for like Wampa or something. Uh, but it's fine to have some abilities you don't care about. Those are just stat crons. Um, and when the old set expires, you're gonna probably have to apply a few data crons on a mismatched faction or uh, alignment. Uh, so you're gonna have to use some light side data crons on dark side characters and vice versa uh, but once you have all the level nines you want you want to try to re-roll for some level sixes if there's some key ones you want like this one this is for a mall team or uh maybe a spring or kylo ren team this one actually is more spring or kylo ren because it's got a lot of crit damage and it gives them offense up and defense penetration so that is one i specifically targeted with a level six but only after i got the level nines i wanted uh, and then towards the end, when you're really running out of steam, um, you might just want to start re-rolling on the level threes to get the exact level three abilities you want. In this set, it's kind of a dud for level threes, uh, but in like set six, there was tons of great level threes that you wanted to target. Uh, so that's kind of the last phase of development. You want to kind of go top down, try to get the level nines you need, but only after you level up a... Like, when I picked the Datacron, I wanted for Mara Jade and wanted to be Trench eventually. I had a bunch of level 8s leveled up and then went to level 9 based on that. Uh, picking the one that had the least amount of work uh, to get to what I wanted. So I believe I had this lengthy ability already rolled at level 6. And that's why I chose to take to level 9 and try to get it for Mara Jade. I just had less work to do. Um, because you are just so strapped for reroll materials. You want to savor every last one of them. But I think that's all the advice. Those are all the phases of how I go through my Datacron development. They're extremely important for PvP. Uh, Grand Arena really hinges on them. For me, I've had a harder time with Set 8 because it's just so little for me to work with. Um, I don't know, other sets have been richer and the stats in previous sets are much better. Uh, set 9, it wasn't my favorite stats of all time but they're all pretty useful. Like everything here is super useful, the least of which probably being resistance pen. And even then, if you get a couple with high resistance penetration, you can find somewhere to use it. Set eight is just so bad for these stats. Like the only ones I like are protection and crit damage. Those are the only ones I really like. The ones that can find some use is like critical avoidance is always doing a little bit of damage mitigation. 
people are helping. Hell still sometimes can do something, but the crit chance numbers are so low and accuracy. There's no real reason for it right now. This is like the word, my least favorite set in a long time. Um, I hope set nine is better because these ones that have bad stats, they're not free to play friendly. It's all about like abilities and then really specific combinations. And when there's only two stats, it's much less likely you're gonna find something useful. So yeah, not my favorite. And I know I just recently made a guide on just shipments uh, for each store, but so this is a self-contained video. I'm gonna go over it here again. Uh, the best thing to buy with Shard Shop currency is Data Cash. Um, never buy the Mark Ones with the, the uh, Shard Shop currency. Even I mean, not never, but like, it's not much Shard Shop currency. But you just get so bloated with these. These are bad values, but I do buy this at the beginning of a new set just so I can have something to upgrade with all that overflow data cash. And I have bought this 100k ally points, even though it's terrible value. You can get way more than this many shard shop currency with that 100k ally points. Uh, other than that, I don't buy much else. I don't even buy these Mark 3s with shard shop currency. I do buy the reroll mats. Uh, those are a good deal with shard shop currency, especially if it's in a refreshing store. Like it was for this one. I don't know if that'll ever happen again, but people really stocked up on the uh, reroll mats. Um, the only thing I'd buy with crystals is the data cache, and like I I'll always low on data cache. So I'll just buy that right now. Um, I even buy this one sometimes. There's a recurring pack that costs 550 crystals, and you can get between like 1.25 million and 6 million or something. It's such a crapshoot. I've bought it a few times and gotten like under 1.5 million, and it's just such a bad value. Just buy that. Like, I've never gotten lucky on it. Um, the only other thing I'd consider buying with crystals is Mark III reroll mats, and that's only if you're in a pinch like a round of GAC is about to start. You have a Dream Data Cron that you just want to reroll a level 9 on. Um, you're only going to get one shot at it, so it's just a gamble. You might have just thrown away crystals. Uh, so it's it's poor value, but it's kind of like buying, like paying a fortune for a cup of water in the desert. Like it's just something so scarce you don't have it and you need it. So uh, you might buy that. Don't buy anything for the older set in here. It's just not enough time left for it to be worth it. Uh, yeah, that's about all I would recommend for the store. So that's all for me on this one. Uh, if you, I hope this helps you out. If you enjoy, don't forget to give a like, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope I gave you some tips that will help you get through Datacron farming easier and be more bit motivated to do it. Uh, obviously, this is more for later game players. If you're an early game player, a lot of this doesn't apply to you because you can't even use Datacrons. And if you're a mid game player, you might not use a ton of Datacrons. So, uh, but I hope someone enjoyed it anyway. Thanks for watching and see you next time.